Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. Today I have an Algebra 1 lesson for you about factoring a polynomial in the form x squared plus bx plus c. So let's start our lesson. Today you're going to factor polynomials in this form as I stated. So the big difference here is what's going to come in the next video is this a. So for this lesson, a is 1. So there is a coefficient here that's seemingly invisible because it's 1. Our essential question today is, how are factoring and multiplying polynomials related? So in this playlist, the previous videos were all about how to multiply polynomials. So now this is kind of like the inverse, the opposite. And it's how are we going to factor them so that they are a product? And then in the coming units that we do involving quadratic functions, this will be necessary in order to identify special characteristics of these functions. So let's go ahead and begin to learn and start our journey of factoring polynomials. So here we go, we're gonna factor a polynomial and that means that we are writing the polynomial as a product of factors. So in previous videos, you've learned that we have binomials and a binomial times a binomial will equal a trinomial. So right now we're going to look at this and we're going to assume that we have x squared plus bx plus c. And once again, if the a, when it's written in standard form, if the coefficient of the x squared term is not 1, then this video is not for you. This will not show you. The upcoming video will tell you how to factor if x is not 1. So here we go. It's going to look like this, a binomial times a binomial. And we're going to use the algebraic variables b, p, and q. OK, and what we need to do is find out what P and Q are such that that when I add P plus Q, I'm going to get the value of B. And when I multiply P times Q, it's going to equal C. So if you think about this in reverse, right, when we did this, I showed you a table in one of my videos and we have X times X is X squared, X times Q, this unknown number is qx and x times p is px. So if we look at this, this is where you can start to see why b, this center term, right, that bx term came from this diagonal when we added these together. What are you adding? You're adding the coefficients. So now we know, this is the explanation, that when we multiply the p and q factors, when we multiply them, they're gonna be equivalent to c, and when we add them, they need to be equivalent to b. So let me show you an example. So we're going to factor the polynomial x squared plus 7x plus 10. And I know that if you've seen a previous video of mine, you know that my favorite method to multiply is using the table. But it also because it helps me visualize factoring. So I know that I'm going to have this trinomial is going to be a factor of a binomial and a binomial. And I already know that this cell of my table would be x times x or x squared. Then I know this c term is always right here. So now, instead of before, we're working in reverse. Before, you used to have these yellow cells filled. And now, all we know is this 10. So we need to know what factors of 10, when multiplied, will give us 10, but when added, are going to give us 7. Okay, so how I'm going to do this is I'm going to show that p plus q must equal 7 and p times q must equal 10. And again, p and q being these values that we're looking for right here. So now I'm going to look at the factors of 10. And I know that 1 times 10 is 10 and 2 times 5 is 10. So those are all the possible pairs of factors to have a product of 10. There's nothing else. So I'm going to check 1 times 10. Well, 1 plus 10 does not equal 7. So this cannot be the pair of factors. So that leaves 2 times 5, which is 10, but let's check it. Then we check it, and 2 plus 5 is 7, so it checks. So my factors are 2 and 5. So let's go over to our table so we can visualize that this is actually what it is. 
So now that I know it's 2 plus 5 is 7 and 2 times 5 is 10, I'm going to add to my table 2 and 5. So originally, this is what you would put in here, x plus 5 and x plus 2. And when we check, we have our x squared, 5 times x, 2 times x, and 2 times 5. And the big reveal here is 2x plus 5x are our like terms, which is 7x. So I can conclude that the binomial x plus 2 multiplied by the binomial x plus 5 is equivalent to x squared plus 7x plus 10. So this is the factored form of this polynomial. So you've just learned to go in reverse. This is factoring. Multiply and you get that. So that's the relationship. All right, here we go. Your turn. I would like you to pause the video, factor this polynomial, and come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So I'm going to model this for you. Again, I'm going to always have my table here because I want to show you what it looks like. Visualize it. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you my pairs of products. 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6. And those are all my pairs of factors. So now I'm going to check to see if when I multiply them, I know I get 24, but now I need to check adding. So 1 times 24 is 24, but 1 plus 24 is not 11. Remember, I'm looking when I add them, they're going to get this because this is where it's coming from in our table. So 2 plus 12 is not 11. 2 plus 12 is 14, so it can't be 2 and 12. Let's check 3 and 8. 3 plus 8 is 11. It checks, so I no longer even need to worry about the 4 and the 6. So let's go over to our table and put the factors 3 and 8 in. And then we can fill in the cell 8x and 3x. And it does, 3 times 8 does equal 4, 24, and 3x plus 8x is 11x, so it checks. So factored is x plus 3 multiplied by x plus 8. All right, so now it's not always going to be a repeated addition. So if this c term is negative, if we have x squared plus something x, subtract a value, okay? If B is positive and C is negative, we know that of our two factors, one of them has to be negative because a negative multiplied by a positive is how you're going to get a negative. If both factors are positive, like in our previous example, then C will be positive. If they're both negative, C will also be positive. So we know that in order for C to be negative, we have to have one positive factor and one negative factor. And if this is going to be positive, we know that the larger factor has to be positive. And, you know, with trial and error, this will you'll start to catch on to this, the, the puzzle nature of this activity. So we know that it's either going to be x plus p multiplied by x minus q or x subtract p multiplied by x plus q because we're going to get our negative term here and our positive term here. So here's an example. So here's my polynomial, my trinomial, and it's x squared plus 9x minus 36. So I've set up my visual representation of all of this. Here's my x squared. I know for sure that's what it's going to be. And then my product is going to be negative 36. So I'm going to write all my pairs of factors that equal negative 36. Negative 1 times 36, negative 2 times 18, negative 3 times 12, negative 4 times 9, and negative 6 times 6. Now notice that I put the smaller value to be negative because I know it has to be in order to get this to be positive. So I'm going to check. Negative 1 plus 36 does not equal 9. Negative 2 plus 18 does not equal 9. Negative 3 plus 12 does equal 9, so I don't even need to check the other pairs. Now you're probably thinking, this seems like a lot of work. Well, I made an organized list to kind of model for you how to do this. Once you catch on to it, you may see it instantly, or you might want to do a trial and error. But if you're getting really frustrated, making a list of factor pairs was always a safe way to go. So let's check this in our table. 
So we're going to add in a factor of negative 3 and a factor of 12, and it doesn't matter. You could put the 12 here and the negative 3 here. That order does not matter. But x times 12 is indeed 12x, and x times negative 3 is negative 3x, and negative 3 times 12 is negative 36. And my diagonal pair here, when added, my like terms is positive 9x. So factored, I have x minus 3 multiplied by x plus 12. All right, your turn. Go ahead and pause, factor, and come back. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So the solution would be, here's my table for the visual, and I'm gonna show you all the factor pairs, negative one times 15 and negative three times five. And that's all we got. There are no other pairs of factors that when multiplied will equal negative 15. So now let's check their sums. Negative one plus 15 is not two, but negative three plus five is indeed positive two. So let's fill in our table. We have negative three and five, giving us the like terms of negative three x and five x when added, give us positive two x, subtract 15. So when factored, x minus three multiplied by x plus five. All right, I have one more example for you now. What happens when b is negative and c is negative? So now we're gonna have our larger factor is gonna be negative. So we're going to have, still in this form, we're gonna have one binomial positive and one negative. So let's look at an example. So I have x squared minus four x minus 21. So I'm gonna write all my factor pairs for negative 21. One times negative 21, noticing that I put the negative with the, ne the larger number, because I know for this to turn out to be negative, my larger factor needs to be negative and my smaller needs to be positive. Three times negative seven, and I'm done. So let's check my sums. One plus negative 21 is not negative four. However, three plus negative seven is negative four. So fill in our table positive three, negative seven, and my like terms have a sum of negative four. So factored, I have x minus seven multiplied by x plus three. Your turn. Go ahead and factor. Come back to check your work. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So again, let's set up the table so we're ready to check and we're gonna make a list of our factor pairs. So one times negative 35, five times negative seven, and that's all we have. So we check, and one plus negative 35 does not equal negative two. Five plus negative seven does equal negative two. Put them in our cells, we have negative seven and five, and our like terms have a sum of negative two. So, Factored, we have x minus 7 multiply by x plus 5. So I hope that helped you understand how to factor um, polynomials. I hope you'll come back for my next video, which will have a as values other than 1. And I hope you'll subscribe to the channel and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's lesson.